Well, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome, as always, on a Thursday afternoon to our Redemptorist Oratory here in Bishop Eden in Liverpool. Now, I'm just slightly concerned this afternoon because I don't have Father Andrew as my technician. I don't have Brother James. Unfortunately, Father Andrew has had to go into hospital, um, struggling a little bit with this treatment that he's having for the lymphoma. Hoping he might be back this afternoon, but he's been there since Sunday morning. Um, so I'm using my own iPad, which I hope has got enough memory on it, and I'm hoping I'm going to be able to load it up afterwards. So here we go. Um, well, it's been a bit of an emotional roller coaster this week, um, and I must confess, uh, I, I really uh, feel tremendously grateful for all the goodwill and uh, all the love that you've shown me uh, over my Golden Jubilee last Tuesday. But I am a bit of an emotional wreck at the moment, trying to cope with it all, to be honest. We had a wonderful day, a lovely celebration here in the oratory with the community, um, and then a magnificent dinner afterwards, I must say. So I'm, I'm very grateful for that, and I'm very grateful, as I say, for all these messages of goodwill and your extraordinary generosity and the trouble that you've gone to to mark the occasion. Um, I really am very touched by the whole experience, and, and thank you for all the encouragement you continue to give me. One of the things that I've been particularly uh, taken by is the fact that you do seem generally very um, pleased that we've had these messages on a Thursday and that we've had our weekend mass. And I'm going to promise that we're going to continue with that for, for the foreseeable future because it seems to me that there's no immediate possibility of us getting back to a normal mass timetable. But I'll come to that at the end just to share with you a few thoughts about how the pastoral area is shaping up. Um, so that in fact next week, um, the Dean, Father Stephen, has pointed out that we've gone from naught to 26 masses next week planned in the pastoral area, which is quite something. So there'll be lots of opportunities for people, hopefully, to be able to come to Mass if you can find the time and also that opportunity to go back to communion. But I do just remind you that, um, that the uh, Sunday obligation hasn't... Um, been put back in place by the bishops. They're very conscious of the difficulties we all, we're all still facing. One of the things I want to say thank you for too, as well as all the generosity, and it has been extraordinary for both parishes, um, so thank you for that, but also your generous promise of prayers and masses. Um, sometimes people say to me, Father, you will say a prayer for me, won't you? And I, of course, I will say yes, and then I very often say, and you'll say one for me, won't you? And sometimes people say, well, you don't need prayers. Um, believe you me, I do. When I began the Mass here for my Jubilee with the community, I reminded them of a phrase that uh, constantly gives me reassurance and encouragement. The fact that St. Paul was able to say, I cannot understand my own behaviour. I think we're all a bit like that sometimes. Uh, we want the best for ourselves and others, and yet we realise how weak and frail we are. And so we begin every Mass, of course, by asking the Lord to heal the hurt in our lives, the failure, the sin. So I, I do need your prayers, and I am grateful for your prayers. Um, obviously there were a few remarkable things. I mean, the schools also, in spite of the fact that they haven't been back to normal or anything like it, uh, both sent messages of goodwill. Um, if you haven't seen them on the website, it's certainly worth having a look uh, at the group, the With You Always group, who uh, have written a new Freddie Freckles story. I, I, I mean, I'm absolutely thrilled with it. I think it's quite brilliant about the COVID-19 problem. Um, and it comes to a wonderful conclusion. Uh, so all I'm going to say is if you haven't seen it, uh, see if you can spare the seven minutes or so to, to listen to the story told by the, the children and their parents and, and ending in a quite remarkable way. So you've inspired me that next Sunday, um, because it's holiday time, we often don't have that much singing, the only singing we're gonna have at next weekend's Mass, recorded Mass, which I'll do on Saturday, ready for Saturday night and Sunday, um, will be the song that you concluded uh, the Freddie Frankel story with, because we haven't sung it, and I was saying to myself, why on earth haven't I sung it until now? So children, I want you to be all ready on Sunday, okay? with uh, drums and tambourines and whatever else you've got to join in the song. Um, and if you haven't got those, then you do the actions with me. Okay. Uh, also, talking of the children, 
loads of, of goodwill messages came, and I, I, was, I was intrigued by this one. You probably won't be able to see it terribly well, um, but it's great fun, because whoever this is, um, whether it's a boy or a girl, I'm not sure, but anyway, they, they're obviously trying to get their heads round the whole idea of 50 years as a priest. Uh, it says in the top corner, wow. And then to kind of bring the point home to himself, we've got um, people in the church and Father Tim at the top there. Um, and then whoever it is, he or she, has actually numbered all 50 years. One, two, three, four, right up to 50. And, um, and it says here, this is how many years you've been in church. <laughs> it's absolutely wonderful. And it reminds me... Uh, of a story many years ago, when I was in our publication's house in the early 2000s, um, and on a Sunday I used to go out to, to the convent chapel in a place called Medstead, and we always had a lovely congregation there, I think I might have, might have told you that before. Um, but there were two little girls, Megan and Emily, and they're both grown up now. Megan, I think, has just qualified as a doctor in London, so congratulations to Megan. And Emily graduated here in Liverpool, um, I think last year, uh, or maybe it was earlier this year, I think it was last year. Um, there were great characters of Mass every Sunday, they became altar servers eventually, but I can still remember this particular day when um, I saw them at the checkout with their mum in Sainsbury's, and I'd just got my shopping and I was coming up behind, uh, and I saw Emily, the younger one, tugging at Megan's arm, she'd noticed me, and I heard her whisper to her sister, I told you, he didn't live in the church all the time. And I was so tickled pink with that that I couldn't resist telling the story the next Sunday in Medstead. And I don't think Emily's ever forgiven me, although she still reminds me of the story whenever I meet her. So there we are. I've put it out even on a wider circuit now, Emily, for you. So no, I don't spend all day, every day in the church. But it's lovely the way the children think about this. And it has been, as I say, a great privilege to be a priest these 50 years, even during the down times when I've had to struggle a bit. So, once again, a big thank you for, for everything during this past week. And uh, I think I'm going to need a year to sort everything out and to go to all these uh, various shows and things with, or, or cricket matches or whatever that uh, some of you have planned for me. So, But thank you for all that. Right, on, on the other score, um, looking forward to next week, I mentioned the Masses. They seem so far to have gone extraordinarily well, certainly in, in Bishop Eden. Tonight we have our first Mass at St Mary's at 7 o'clock, so hopefully that will go really well. We've had lovely numbers in the church, but not too many, so we haven't had to turn anybody away yet, which is brilliant, and I hope we can carry on like that. So just to remind you that we continue then, this Sunday we're going to have the first Masses on a Sunday. But remember, if we can reserve those to people who could only get on a Sunday, and those of you who could go during weekdays could pick off those opportunities. I mean, people are saying that the, the maximum numbers in the church is probably only about 50. I think it might be a little bit more than that, especially if you come as families and you all sit in the one bench. But even so, we are very limited, and, and I'd hate the thought of too many people or anybody having to be turned away. But um, we'll just have to see if, if we can continue to get it right but anyway, the, the Sunday timetable, just to remind you, it'll all be up on the website anyway. And indeed, the, the, all the Masses across the pastoral area, I think 26 of them, as I say, um, Father Stephen uh, is predicting. It's not being finalised, but again, it'll all be up on the website by the weekend. But certainly for us, next Sunday, 9.30 here at Bishop Eden, 11 o'clock at St Mary's, 6 o'clock back here at Bishop Eden. Then the weekday timetable, uh, Monday, 11 o'clock here, Tuesday, um, we'll be having an evening Mass at St Mary's at 7 o'clock in the evening. Wednesday, 6 o'clock here. Thursday, now, so that as far as possible, we can have across the pastoral area, Masses, morning, lunchtime, evening. We're going to have a lunchtime Mass at St Mary's instead of the evening one today. So next Thursday, it will be at midday. Friday, back here for evening Mass at 6 o'clock at Bishop Eden. And then the Saturday, I'm just reserving to do my recorded Mass. So there won't be any public Masses in either of our two churches on the Saturday. So there we are. That's, that's the plan. Um, obviously, the prayer intentions have been really important over the weeks. I think there are just two intentions I'd particularly like to draw to your attention today. Um, we've been praying for Margaret Murphy, who's been quite poorly um, 
So we, uh, but she died last Sunday. Her, her son Mark phoned me on Sunday afternoon. Um, so her funeral will be coming up, I think, uh, next week. And uh, so do pray for the repose of the soul of Margaret and pray for the family. We've also prayed quite a lot for Bertha Farrelly, who's um, had quite a lot of illness to cope with and managed to come through a very serious operation and, and was out of hospital. But now she needs to have a serious heart operation next week. So I've promised her that we will keep her especially in, in our prayers. And indeed, all those intentions have gone down here and we continue to build up the number of intentions uh, beneath our altar. And the community prays for them morning, uh, noon and night, literally. Um, and one other thing that perhaps I might draw your attention to, again, I was very touched by this, that the uh, Allerton Brass did, did a recording of a Gaelic blessing for me. And how you do this, I don't know, bands and orchestras, I've seen this uh, coming up, uh, whether it's, is it Zoom you use? But anyway, you put it together quite brilliantly, and I, I was stunned by that, so that was absolutely lovely. Thank you very much for that. Thank you all of you for all the good wishes. Um, and I'm just having a quick look at my notes to remind myself that uh, Anne down the road, talking about these masses that are coming up, but also about uh, possible funerals and, and other services, um, there are some people who are going to be going away on holiday who have been part of our cleansing teams, making sure the churches are uh, sanitised and so on. So we do need more helpers. So if you can help at St Mary's and indeed here at Bishop Eaton, if you could get in touch, um, the easiest way is just to use the email, uh, get in touch with our secretaries, with Haley or Chris here, uh, and with Anne down the road at St Mary's, and offer your services. Um, Hopefully some of the restrictions will be eased in due course. It does seem an awful lot to have to go cleansing everywhere anybody kind of moved. Um, but that's the way it is at the moment and we're trying to be faithful to what we're being asked to do. So there we are. I think that's everything for today. I hope I haven't gone on too long. Um, let's just pray that God will bless and strengthen us, that Father Andrew may soon be able to come home and continue his treatment. And let's pray God's blessing on you, your families, that you may remain peaceful as we continue to try to emerge from these very difficult and restrictive times. May the Lord bless you, protect you and fill you with his peace today and always. Amen.